Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Want to win a $500 Jays gift card, a fly fishing trip in northern Michigan, a Lake Michigan charter boat trip, a walleye jigging trip on the Saginaw River? Well, join the Michigan United Conservation Clubs this summer as they continue to fight for fish, and four lucky winners will get a chance to get out fishing and support conservation. By Tri-County Logging. Experienced in sustainable forestry practices, Tri-County Logging can help you manage your property by keeping your woods healthy and generate income. Serving Southern and Mid-Michigan for nearly 50 years, tricountylogging.com. For over 30 years, Vanguard Outdoors has made the gear that turns a regular hunt into another fine day of field. We know that a good shooting stick or a nice pair of binoculars can make or break your day. Our design teams include serious hunters who work hard to bring you the best sporting optics, shooting sticks, tripods, bags, and more. We are Vanguard Outdoors. Hello everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Silik, and we've got a brand new show in store for you this week. We're gonna hit a few different parts of the state and we're gonna kick it off in Frankfurt where Jimmy Jordan and I had our annual fishing trip with Bob Garner and Captain Steve Martin out on Lake Michigan. We had a blast out there and really got into the fish. You won't wanna miss that story. And then I'll take you down to Lake St. Clair and introduce you to kind of a legend there who makes musky baits and has been doing so for over 20 years. Jimmy Jimmy's also got a great story in store for us this week. Well, that's right, Jenny. We have one more story on this week's show, and it's something that you, the viewer, can take part in. The National Wild Turkey Federation, along with our DNR, are doing a new survey that you can take part in. We're going to teach you everything you want to know about that. Lots of variety on this week's show, so you stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger, and it's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, Dancing on the pine forest floor The autumn colors catch your eyes Here come the crystal winter skies It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors What a beautiful day in the woods Someday our children all will see This is their finest legacy The wonder and the love of Michigan As the wind comes whispering through the trees The sweet smell of nature's in the air Great Lakes to the quiet stream, shining like a sportsman's dream. It's a love of Michigan we all share. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse, a sportsman's meat processor and Michigan destination since 1988. Offers a variety of homemade smoked meats and Michigan-made products in-store and online. The Country Smokehouse features an outdoor barbecue and bar. Details at countrysmokehouse.com. By G5 Outdoors. Makers of the Quest and Prime bows, manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. This moment brought to you by DTE's Clean Vision. It was time once again for our annual pilgrimage to one of my favorite spots with some of my favorite people. The Port of Frankfurt with the crew of Michigan Out of Doors TV, current and past. It's a night full of laughs, stories, and if you're lucky, maybe even a few fish. Um, we're going to head out to 140, 150 foot of water. We're going to set up and fish kings. Um, the king fish has been, last couple of weeks, been fairly tough, but the last couple of days something's been showing up. So. We had probably a dozen bites on him this morning, and hopefully things will improve. We are out here again. We look forward to this trip every year. We actually missed last year, so we've got two years worth of Garner stories to catch up on. <laughs> And the Garner cloning project is going very well. Anders' younger son, Drake, is here with us today. And you know Anders doing today? It's crazy. It's like we're fishing with a 14-year-old Bob Garner out here, I'm telling you. When you get to become a middle-aged woman... Middle-aged? You don't go for... <laughs> You don't go for the uh, lead core. You're in the back now, sister. <laughs> All right. All right.
right. Fish in the boat. Oh, yeah. Boy, Sweet. Yeah, nice little king. Heck yeah. yeah. Nice. Nice job, Jenny O. Jenny C. Over the years, I've learned, you know, gardeners always acting polite and saying, I'd much rather, I have more enjoyment out of seeing people catch oh, yeah. fish. I'd rather sit here and let you guys catch them. And the older I get, the more I know why. Yeah, exactly. The arthritis, exactly. the back. <laughs> or I always say, I always say, I'll take the last one. Yes. After Jenny's first fish, we had a several hour lull. We were thinking we may be done for the night with most of the other boats reporting similar boxes of fish so far. But that's why you stay at it, and that's why you trust your captain. Another one hit on the center shoot rigger, and this seems to be another king, maybe. But it's still taking line. Oh, it's a good sign. Oh, hopefully I cannot lose this one. There we go. Jeez. Okay, yep. He's not happy. About an hour and a half to two hours since our last fish hit, but worth the wait. Sun's starting to go down. Beautiful night out of Frankfurt, for sure. Good to see, good to see yeah. Mr. Michigan outdoors, you know, uh, nail a big fish like that. That's fun. Good going, Jim. They went on a flasher flag accommodation down 90. That arrived off a couple times. We had four, three or four bites, five bites so far. But the sun's going down, so we'll see what happens. It's been a slow night, but from what the radio says, that's been, it's not just been Steve, it's been everybody's been a little bit slow tonight. Typically the evenings are a little bit slower, but it is nice to come out here and catch the sunset. And when we come up here with Bob, obviously we want to catch fish, and but this trip is always more about who you, who's on the boat and hearing old stories, some we've heard before, and some we hear, hear for the first time, like Jenny was telling us, she. Got shot in the foot one time by, well, I won't say who it was, but <laughs> if you ever see her, ask her about it sometime. But uh, it's just fun to be out with friends and the fishing. I think the older you get, the. Oh, look at that! <laughs> yes. Yeah, the, Who's doing it? Jordan, Jordan, grab it, grab it. Couldn't have teed that one up a whole lot better. <laughs> I was just chatting away and then the fish hit. Jimmy was already throwing in the towel. No, no, no. Hopefully we'll get fish number three here in the boat. There's another one. Fish! Okay, go ahead, Ready? Right. Yeah, I'm on it. There you go. Whatever you go. There he is. Yeah. He's waking up a little bit. Steve was saying that, that there just weren't many you know, king salmon here, and so we really expect to catch maybe one. Then Jenny got that one, and and then Jimmy got a nice one, and we went for a long, long time without it. Well, we had another hit or two, but but then all of a sudden Jimmy, you're interviewing Jimmy, and Jimmy said, "Well, it's really slow up here." Bam, bam, two rods go off and we got both of those kings in. The one you got, Jordan, is, is nice. a, it's the spiritual leader of the whole group. <laughs> it really is. That is a darn fine, not only that, silvers all get out, oh, it will be great eating. So, it, it, that's fantastic. You know, but it's, it's showtime here. It's showtime, the sun's going down, 
it's getting dark, and if you're gonna get kings out of Frankfurt, boy, showtime's the best time to be there. What do you know, end of the night? I tried to get the last fish on every trip, and none before that, so. You get another one go? Okay. This is not such a, such a big fish. But you know what, I'll take it. Because between the tail and the head, Jordan, I'm gonna tell you, it's all fish. All right, I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yes, sir. -ree. You know, that's just exactly the right size, too, <laughs> for a 70 year old guy. Yeah? Perfect. Okay, get a good shot from the head to the tail because it's all fish in between. <laughs> to those of us lucky enough to do the TV show, owe oh, so much to those who came before us. And to get to fish with Bob and hear the stories of days gone by, well, it's pretty special to say the least. To spend time on the water, it is great. To spend time with friends is priceless. To catch fish as well, it makes for a perfect night here in Michigan's Out of Doors. If you're passionate about musky fishing, you've probably heard of Ziggy Lures. Well, Mr. Ziggy Obedzinski lives right here in Michigan, so we thought we'd check in and see exactly how those famous lures are made. For nearly 20 years, this little backyard shop has been producing the stuff that big fish stories are made of. Ziggy Custom Musky Lures are made here on the shores of the St. Clair River, just a few miles from some of the best musky fishing in the world. Prior to that, I was making ice fishing decoys. And, uh, you know, it requires the same type of painting and colors and patterns that, that are on uh, ice fishing decoys. And my uh, musky fishing friends got me to start repainting their beat up and lures that their patterns that they didn't like, you know, or the colors they didn't like. So that's how I got started you know, repainting other people's lures, so. Okay. And then after a while, they, a couple of my friends decided that I ought to make my own, copy my own. But uh, for the first uh, year or year and a half, none of them worked very good, you know. So the uh, charter guys here on the uh, American side and the Canadian side uh, I started giving them samples out, and uh, they started critiquing my design, you know, make it fatter, shorter, change the bill, change the angle, and after about a year of that, they said, stop, that works good, continue, don't, just, you know, change nothing. So that's how my shape and pattern evolved. Captain Tom Loy has been musky fishing Lake St. Clair for over 20 years, and he won't leave his dock without an arsenal of Ziggy's lures on board. Ziggy and I have been friends for a long time, and, and I enjoy coming over here and talking to him, and just being in this environment is fun. Just to see what he's doing and what he has, it's, and, and to talk to him is fun. It's just nice to be here. And all of the musky guys feel the same way. He's good friends with all of us. We were talking about St. Lawrence's a little while ago, the, the most consistent color and Ziggy lures are the most consistent bait on the lake. Uh, I, would, I would bet that 98% of the charter guys who know anything about fishing have at least one Ziggy St. Lawrence. Six inch, eight inch, and probably a 12 inch as well. We all have, as Zig was saying earlier, we all have chewed up baits. Um, and as Zig says, those are the most productive baits, but it gets to a point where you can hardly use them anymore. I have some that you can't tune up. You can't make them go straight. Um, they're so chewed up. Um, but I have some hanging on the garage wall and people always go, ooh, look at that. That's a really good one. So, you know, I like them. Okay. I, I like the chewed up baits and they're always good to have around. Everybody knows Zig. Everybody knows Zig. Every charter captain on the lake, like I said a moment ago, has Ziggy baits. I don't know how many, many I have, 20, 25 in there somewhere. And I have from six inches to the, the bigger ones. 
and it's his bigger, the bigger Ziggies, I think the heaviest fish in modern time was caught on one of Ziggy's baits. That's what was 48 and a half pounds. Ziggy has built quite the reputation with his work over the years, and it was time to see exactly how these legendary lures are made. The way I uh, make these lures is we start out with a blank piece of wood. It's either, I use either jelly tong or mahogany. And uh, we start out with a square shape and we put it in a duplicator and we rough cut it out like this and then we sand it then we put in the eyes and then we put in the mouth and then we cut it in half and then we we insert a wire and then we glue it with an epoxy type glue put it together sand it again and we end up with the raw piece of lure here you know, after, after you know, the wood, the, the basic wood lure is made, then it has to be sealed, primed, base coated, and then you can put a color on it. So the whole process from start to finish, from here to here, is approximately an hour, you know, per bait. So it, it's labor intensive, but... You know, to make lures, I think you gotta love it. You know, it ain't very profitable, you know, dollar-wise, you know. Right. So, you end up working for about uh, $10 an hour or something of that nature. So, I just, I've always loved fishing and, and after I retired, I needed a hobby and this is what I got into, you know. And I just love it, it just, uh, it just, it keeps me busy, it keeps me away from the refrigerator and the TV, so, you know, that's the main, and, and there's a lot of, met a lot of good people. It's, it's amazing, but the uh, fishing community and the people that fish in it are just fantastic people. I, I paint to order, because uh, there's just, the, the patterns are endless and the colors are endless. People want different color bellies, scales, uh, backs, uh, it's just an endless thing. So, you know, you never know what somebody wants. For me to have an inventory of everything I painted, it's just basically impossible, you know. So generally I just have blank lures that I can paint and whatever. You guys send me uh, emails and text me pictures or they bring me a a sample of a bait from wherever they found it and to tell me to duplicate it, you know. Right. So, and that's what I do. I just bait, paint to order. That, I, I wish I knew what the best color is because it changes daily, hourly. <laughs> you know, what's good one day won't catch nothing the next day, you know, or for the year. I mean, I've had patterns that work continually for one or two years and then all of a sudden it won't catch a fish. While he finished up the final steps of the lure making process, Ziggy talked about the old days on Lake St. Clair. Yeah, I musky fished, you know, with them. I started in, uh, I think it was about 1964. Out in the lake at that time, the water was muddy and dirty and we would fish two days and if we caught one fish, we were happy, so, but, you know, over the years, the water cleaned up and the fish got, fishing got better, so I enjoyed all that. Do you still fish? I still fish right to this day. It sure was fun hearing some stories from the old days and seeing how these famous Ziggy lures are made. Special thanks to Ziggy Obedzinski for keeping the artistic craft of custom lure making alive and well here in Michigan's Out of Doors. Well, if you are looking for a reason to go for a drive here in the state of Michigan, we are going to give it to you. If you're a turkey hunter, or even if you're not, you can participate in a new brood survey that the National Wild Turkey Federation, along with our DNR, are doing to get a better handle on our turkey population. Turkey hunting has to be one of the best things we have here in the great state of Michigan. It is just one of the most exciting, best eating, and best times of the year. I just love everything about it. 
And one thing I didn't know is that we are one of only a handful of states that does not have a brood survey. So recently, the NWTF, the National Wild Turkey Federation, had a board of directors meeting. So I stopped by to learn a little bit more about the NWTF and the new brood survey here in Michigan that is just starting this year. First, I sat down with Brandon Nutt to learn a little bit more about the Turkey Federation here in Michigan. We have a bunch of individual chapters along the state from the Indiana border to the Upper Peninsula. And they're kind of like businesses that I oversee and make sure that they um, stay together as a committee, recruit new volunteers, start new chapters, and make them as financially successful as they can be to raise more money for the mission of the NWTF. The mission statement of the NWTF is the conservation of the wild turkey and the preservation of our hunting heritage. The turkey is the face of the NWTF, but our work benefits all wildlife. And also we have our three coordinators and with our biologists and our money raised, we do jakes, wheeling, wheeling events, um, widow events for women. So we're preserving the hunting heritage and bringing more people into the fold of hunting as a whole while also doing studies, research, and habitat projects. It is really impressive the amount of dollars and the amount of work that the NWTF does nationwide, but more so here in Michigan, both with volunteers and with our DNR. I work really closely with our fundraising staff to take the dollars our volunteers and members raise and put it on the ground, either doing direct implementation for conservation work, prescribed fire, cutting, all things that improve habitat for wild turkeys and other wildlife species. Ryan was able to give me a little bit more information on this new brood survey here in Michigan. We're really excited to be a partner with the Michigan DNR on the development and the in the first year here of the brood survey in Michigan. Um, you know, for for a long time there were a lot of states across the country that were were looking at ways to get some data in terms of production. So how many turkeys are coming into being recruited that year for to make up the, the juvenile birds in that following year. So um, Michigan now with this brood survey is going to have an index from year to year to better understand what's going on with production. Um, so Michigan was one of probably less than a handful of states left in the eastern United States for eastern wild turkeys that didn't currently maintain a brood survey. And so the data from this survey, which any, anyone can do and provide information for. So if you're out and about um, going to get the mail, going for a run, if you're on a drive with family, obviously um, doing so safely, and you see a hen with poults or a hen by itself, or if you see a group of male birds, a gobblers together, um, try and accurately assess how many birds are there um, and, and what sex they are and what county you're in. And then you can use the, the app and or go directly online to the Michigan DNR website and put that information in. And essentially what we'll do is when we get all of this data from July 1st to August 31st during that two month window, then we'll have a sample size hopefully throughout the entire state of Michigan. And the data from that will give us an understanding of approximately how many hens per poll or poults per hen, excuse me, we're seeing across the state. And so the, from the, the biological aspect, our hope is to see that number be somewhere greater than two poults per hen. So anytime you're roughly at two poults per hen, that's the number that's strived for in order to keep stable wild turkey populations. If we see that, that number dip below then, then we would suspect we're gonna to start to see some declines in the estimates of abundance. And then when numbers exceed that, obviously, we're, we're, we're thinking that we're gonna see an increase in wild turkey populations thereafter. So this data is gonna be critically important for the agency as they put it into their population modeling and better use that to help inform any proposed changes and regulations moving forward. This new brood survey is open now through the end of the month, so take advantage of it. The more info, the better in helping get a handle on just where our turkey population is at. And the goal there is really to get a handle on production. So it helps us get an idea of how many young birds are being produced each year, and it's a standardized survey that multiple states are doing, so it's something that we can compare data to. And we're hoping that it gives us a good idea of, are we able to produce enough turkeys right now to replace the turkeys and help see if we have a stable population or not. Yeah, the survey is pretty simple to do. You can go to our website and find um, the turkey brood survey information. There's a single link that takes you directly to a survey. I think there's seven questions on it, probably takes you less than a minute to fill out. And basically you just enter, I saw this many hens, this many young birds. If you saw some toms, you can put that information in as well. We ask you county. We use email address to help us know how many people have submitted um, information. And 
that's really it. The survey runs from the 1st of July to the end of August. So anytime you see turkeys during that time frame, you can just hop on there really quick, enter a few bits of information, and um, that really can help us get a picture of how turkeys are doing throughout the state. It is always good to see the DNR working with sportsmen's groups. The more we can work together, I think that helps us all. Yeah, we have a great relationship with the Turkey Federation. They help us with a lot of projects. They've been instrumental in getting this brood survey going. They've um, worked on it nationwide, trying to standardize the analysis of the brood data for all the states that participate in it. Um, their members are some of the major participants in entering data for the brood survey. They help us with habitat projects. Um, just n this next week, we're doing a dedication at the Sharonville State Game Area for what we call a turkey tracks, which are um, areas at multiple game areas in southern Michigan where we have maps and information to help beginning turkey hunters know that this is a good place to turkey hunt and kind of highlights what we're doing um, on those areas. And that's in partnership with the National Wild Turkey Federation. So they're really a great partner here in the state of Michigan. So there you go, something new that may just help us get a better handle on where our turkey population is at. Again, the survey runs through the end of the month, and to all who will hit the woods this fall and spring, good luck in the turkey woods. Thank you so much for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you join us in upcoming weeks. We've got all sorts of great things headed your way. If you'd like to see where we are, where we're headed next, and maybe check out the show on a deeper level, you can always do that online. Well, that's right, Jenny. Online is a good way to kind of keep tabs on us. You can do that through our website, our different social media platforms, as well as YouTube. You can subscribe to our channel there and get an email every time we post something new. Get out and enjoy everything our great state has to offer. And as always, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by... Do you dream of somewhere bigger than your backyard? You can get there with Greenstone. Whether you want to hunt, fish, hike, or just watch the sunset, we're ready to help you own your place in the great outdoors. To learn more, visit GreenstoneFCS.com. By Alta Equipment Company, providing sales, rentals, service, and parts because uptime matters. From earth moving to landscaping and light construction, Alta offers over 50 brands across seven Michigan locations to serve you. More information online or 844-GO-2-ALTA. When I want to fire away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land, I am a Michigan man.